What's going on guys, Vitae Dubin is here and welcome to another episode of today's Encrypto Show. In this video, I want to discuss whether or not you should convert your USDT Tether into other stable coin due to the recent revelation that might cause some huge problems for USDT. We'll talk about why Ethereum whales are accumulating more than $700 million of Ethereum. We'll talk about the latest theory, who could be the inventor of Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto, and we'll look at the charts for Bitcoin and Ethereum and where it might lead it. So let's begin guys, subscribe to the channel, and we're covering both the news and technical analysis. Uh, so we are seeing the market cap is still at $156 billion, way lower than, of course, um, even a recent months ago. And let's talk about the USDT first. Coinbase recently in the blog post uh, from December the 8th announced that switch to the trusted and reputable digital dollar USDC and they are removing any fees associated with converting your USDT to USDC. As you can see, the events of the past few weeks have put some stable coins to the test and we've seen a flight to safety. We believe the USD coin is a trusted and reputable stable coin, so we are making it more frictionless to switch. Starting today, we're waiving fees for global retail customers to convert USDC, uh, USDT to USDC. So that is, of course, um, signaled a wave of questioning across the crypto market whether USDT Tether is solvent, is okay, whether is, uh, something is going on with Tether. And as you know, USDT is being used literally everywhere on every single platform, every single exchange. So if something happens with USDT, if it pairs out of the dollar, then the whole crypto market is going to be in huge, huge trouble. So why Coinbase, the largest uh, US company, is saying those things? Well, let's take a look. Um, a couple years ago, we saw that New York general attorney alleges that the Bitcoin exchange Bitfinex misused Tether to hide $850 million hole. Okay, so that's one thing. Then we saw how Bitfinex, which is company uh, Ifinex, right? They issued $1 billion of LEO token a couple of years ago to plug the hole. So there is some shady stuff going on there. Uh, we see that BlackRock, Fidelity, and others invested $400 million in USDC, the stablecoin. But here's the kicker. The Tether papers revealed that who acquired 70% of all the USDT ever issued. And if you look back, look down on this article, we can see Alameda Research, which is right now became bankrupt with the FTX fiasco. We are seeing that Alameda Research have uh, like 50% of the global issuance of stablecoin. Take a look at this. <coughs> Alameda Research, where I should find this, right here. Uh, together, Alameda and Cumberland receive at least $60 billion in USDT across the time period analyzed, equal to around 55% of all outbound volume. 49.2 billion, 71% of Alameda and Cumberland USDT was acquired in the past year alone, equal to about 60% of all tethered issued at the time. That's how much Alameda holds USDT. And you know, Alameda became bankrupt. And we also see that Binance CEO is saying basically that Sam Bankman Fried uh, used his trading firm Alameda Research and tried to undermine. Tether, risking a crypto route. And he says that uh, they were trying to crush Tether. And we've seen how on November 10th, uh, Tether crashed and depacked from the dollar and been worth $0.9963. So there is some concerns going on right now about Tether. So out of caution to be better safe than sorry, if you hold USDT, you might want to consider move a good portion of those USDTs into other stable coin like BUSD or uh, USDC. 
which is back to one to one by dollar and USDT, the Tether company still is not transparent about the, the holdings that they have, right? They went from being $1 billion in Tether within a few short years, couple years, it went to $70 billion. Where all of this Tether really came from? That's a good question. Uh, so uh, that's definitely uh, what I would say is best to do. Now, CZ Binance went on a route against Kevin O'Leary from the Shark Tank, accusing Kevin O'Leary of protecting and defending Sam Bankman Freed, according to the recent uh, appearance that he had on the CNBC. You can watch the clip right here. So he claimed some stuff about Binance that apparently this whole collapse uh, uh, was uh, with FTX was also due to the uh, uh, FTX paying $2 billion or so into uh, Binance to buy them out because Binance, you know, uh, interfered with their regula regulatory quest, etc. So Binance got angry. <laughs> he says, we exited FTX one and a half year ago in July 2021. And since then, FTX invested in myriads of companies. So you can see all of these companies that uh, FTX invested had equity or acquisition or something or fund. 5.5 billion. On top of that, FTX spent money on Miami Stadium, multiple Super Bowl ads, baseball referees, Formula One, and not to mention massive political donation and luxury real estate and reprehensible misuse of customer funds. And $15 million is what uh, Kevin O'Leary was paid as a uh, spokesperson to uh, be representing FTX, right? And apparently he lost all this money because he left it at the, at the platform. Um, so he said, unlike Kevin O'Leary, we continue to do due diligence even after we make an investment. Um, Sam was so unhinged when we decided to pull out as an investor that he launched a series of offensive tirades at multiple Binance team members, including threatening to go to extraordinary lengths to make us pay. We still have those text messages. Uh, look at this. Shortly after that, Sam began investing in friends in high places, from media to policymaker to celebrities like Kevin, and he used that network to manip manipulate public opinion, including attacking me and others in the industry. Yeah, so he goes on on a rant right here, and uh, <laughs> those and uh, then FTX, uh, uh, see the previous CEO SBF also chimes in and like, man, it's it's a mess, it's a mess what's going on right now, and SBF appears to going to be um, essentially uh, uh, going to the committee. Uh, he still thinks it will be useful. And I will to testify on the 13th uh, for the U.S. House Committee. So that's going to be happening in a couple of days from now, right? Um, okay. And here is what we also know about the FTX collapse. Um, Alameda Ventures Capital, uh, 5.4 billion to 500 companies. Uh, so a lot, a lot of companies, right? including Elon Musk, SpaceX, and Boring Company, a whole bunch of random stuff like video game studios, betting platforms, online banks, all kinds of stuff. Uh, both Samuel and Caroline are hiring uh, very powerful lawyers, so they're probably going to be a, a, a core deal right there. Um, FTX reportedly offered $100 million to Taylor Swift to sponsor the brand. That's a lot of money. Um, yeah, so, and the NFTs on FTX have gone missing. <coughs> so that's that's what's happening there. Uh, Bitcoin holders will get richer as big crash comes closer, says Robert Kiyosaki. Let's just talk about the, the collapse of the uh, US dollar and uh, and what might, you know, people that hold Bitcoin will kind of uh, be saved by, by that event. And looking at the history, look at where we are. Bitcoin, we have indeed seen a real black swan event, FTX bankruptcy. The history of BTC is lined with such event and the market will recover from it as it did in the past. So we had Bitfinex crash in 2015. Bam, it was in the down market. COVID-19, bam, huge crash, right? FTX crash. And look at this line. This is the 
simple moving average line of 220 uh, weeks and there we go exactly at this white line once again so that should tell you something looking at the charts of Bitcoin we are approaching our next halving event in April 2024 this is the monthly chart and uh, we can see that uh, uh, November was a bearish month and created a bearish engulfing candle right here which is not a good thing and it signifies uh, increased potential for the Bitcoin price to go down if Bitcoin is not going to hold this level which is right now it's on the icing this is the exact level that we've seen in this week the candle on the uh, January when we see a lot of sales pressure coming in here and also a lot of buying when we started to move up here so but this is icing on on the on the on the ice we are trading on the ice right now Bitcoin can easily fall from here based on what we've seen on this month and the next crucial level of support is at thirteen thousand seven hundred dollars this is exactly where we had those months uh, body candles closed in 2017 and 2018 and also right here in, in a big rejection in 2019 so uh, resistant turn to support so this is a huge level to be looking at 13,700 and we do have an increased chance that Bitcoin can go there however it's not necessarily it's not necessarily um, there is a lot of uncertainty in the market right now and Bitcoin don't have to do that right it can easily climb to 19.5 but we, we do need to go back to 19.5 and better yet to twenty thousand dollars to uh, to kind of maintain our uh, accumulation zone in this period uh, in, in these levels right here but look at it as a possibility so you can leave some some uh, some dollars right some dry powder uh, on the side in case that this is going to happen to be able to buy uh, bitcoins more cheaper but also uh, i believe and i will not you know i'm still buying and those prices because this is all great accumulation period for the bitcoin price and looking on ethereum right now we are still you can see in a, a downward uh, daily trend this is lower high and 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 lower high lower high so we're still we're in this channel we're in the down trending channel and down uh, downward uh, uh, momentum so until otherwise uh, you know we still Ethereum can still go down below one thousand dollar levels yeah uh, but uh, it may not right so it's it's unclear at this point it's unclear uh, we need to break this this trend we need to create a higher higher highs we need to go above seventeen hundred dollars for ethereum uh to reverse the bearish uh, trend and we are seeing a lot of whales are accumulating ethereum uh, uh, in the last couple of days ethereum whales accumulate over 690 million dollars in ethereum so um that's a sign that the whales the big whales are accumulating they believe in ethereum um, and uh, you know they're looking forward for the next upgrade which is the Shanghai upgrade when with this upgrade the staking withdrawals will be available those that for two years they've been waiting for this to for the withdrawal from the staking rewards to be unleashed is going to finally happen somewhere uh, tentatively in March 2023 a lot to look forward to for the Ethereum uh, uh, price and finally i want to share with you the many facts pointing to chain leaks sergey nazarov being satoshi nakamoto you seen sn sn uh so that's kind of interesting as uh, sergey nazarov uh is actually the founder of Chainlink, the most used uh pro oracle protocol for uh for crypto space so what evidence suggests that uh, he is the founder of Bitcoin, the creator of Bitcoin. Well, we see that he created smartcontract.com just a week before he, the announcement of uh, the Bitcoin white paper, smartcontract.com. Also, in a video, he admitted that he has been in the crypto space for 10 years. I wanted to, to watch this video uh and uh, and see for yourself and see for yourself because <coughs> this is kind of interesting 
as he said that 10 years uh, he's been in the uh, in the in the uh, blockchain space check out this video and i'm see after after seven years of developing smart contracts and 10 years in the well 10 years well a, a number of years in, in any case a number of years in 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 in, in the blockchain industry you 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 basically see um you see how he struggled, how he struggled to continue because he slipped away that he's been in the blockchain industry for 10 years. And that's exactly when Bitcoin started, right? Uh, that was in 2020, uh, that, that, that uh, video, right? So uh, a lot of ties and also uh, there is evidence that uh, he was in the... Uh, Satoshi Nakamoto was using a ra Russian proxy to uh, to go for yeah anyway so it's not proven a hundred percent but it's interesting SN SN being Satoshi Nakamoto yeah uh, so that is that's it for me today I hope you have a fantastic Saturday and weekend and uh, I'm looking forward to update you with more news in regards to the crypto markets right now a lot of certainty and a lot of FUD. Uh, we are not clear at this moment uh, what direction in the next few weeks Bitcoin is going to take, whether it's going to hold the ice of $17,000 or going to break down. Time will tell. December will tell. This month is going to tell a lot how we are going to be doing. So we'll be keeping a close look. Right now, there is an increased chance that Bitcoin is going to go all the way to $13,700 which if it goes there, it's going to en encounter a serious level of support that will prepare the price uh, all the way back up. So keep an eye and I'll, I'll, I'll keep you updated and uh, uh, stay tuned.